Hello and welcome back to Crazy Rove Studio. In this video, we will learn how to take a backup of a SQL always on availability group using the Networker SQL Management Studio plugin. <laughs> So when do you actually use this particular option of using the Network SQL Management Studio plugin? Uh, this is mainly in case you want to give the complete control of the data protection management of the SQL application to the SQL database administrator. So this does not mean that you as a backup administrator will not have any responsibilities. Your main responsibility here would be the initial configuration of course of the clan instances and the pool and so on and also your main responsibility would also lie on making sure that all the media is available for for the backup and restore of the SQL database server. Let's take a quick look at the configuration of uh, our availability group and also uh, of, at a few prerequisites that you would need to put in place before uh, we go ahead and configure the backup or initiate a backup using the Networker plugin for SQL Management Studio. First and foremost, let's just quickly look at our availability group configuration. So right now I'm on the primary node, which is SQL node 1. The name of our availability group is SQL underscore AG1. And let's quickly take a look at the configuration that is important in relation to backup. First and foremost is the backup preference. So the usual backup preference is obviously the secondary and that is why the whole federated backup configuration privilege lies in. Uh, the other important configuration that you need to take, uh, take a look at when you're configuring the backup preference as prefer secondary is that the secondary nodes should have a readable secondary replica or permission for uh, reading the secondary replica. Other than this, the user that uh, would be doing the backup and operation task would also need to have the relevant permission or server roles assigned to it. Mainly this is admin, which is very important. Outside these configuration on the SQL server or on the SQL application, you'd also need to have a few additional uh, permissions, which is on the operating system. Let's take a quick look at that. So if you look at the SQL Server Admin Guide, there are a bunch of permissions that are listed there. Uh, one of it is that the user that would be managing the backup and restore needs to be the member of at least two groups in the on the operating system. These are the default groups that are part of the Windows operating system. One is the administrator. So my user is part of the domain admin, so this is going to take care of that. And the other is the backup operator, which is here. So once these configurations or permissions are in place, the next set of permissions are actually on your networker server. So on the networker server, the user that would be responsible for backup and restore needs to be part of the operator group. So here I've just mention star rate of star this is not a best practice again this is just for a demo uh, you might have to figure out which user is or which group uh, will be doing the the backup for example if you're using an ad group which is uh, basically the group that uh, the sql administrators belong to then you can use the external roles as displayed on your screen right now so let's just leave it to this so that my configuration is easy and yes, so that's most of the prerequisites. Obviously, the other prerequisites is again on the networker server. That is, you would have to create all the client instances for all the uh, members that belong to that particular availability group. Meaning here, I have three client instances. One for the availability group itself, uh, the AG group name for the SQL server. And you would also have to configure the instances for all the nodes that are part of that availability group and also make sure that the availability group instance has all the nodes added in in the remote access list so usually you can give it a star at the rate uh, to make sure that you know anybody from uh, who is logging on to the sql node one uh, 
to be able to do the restore or have access to the backups that are done for SQL AG1. But if in case your organization has stricter rules, then you can go ahead and list only the members who would need that particular access. Other than this, there is the device requirement. I already have two devices here on pool FS. So that is also in place. Now let's just hop on to the SQL server to go ahead and initiate a backup of the always on availability group configured database. Uh, here, there are two ways you can launch the plugin. So one way is to just click on the start menu, go to uh, EMC Networker and there you will get this particular configuration where a networker plugin for SQL Server. But if in case you already have your uh, SQL management studio up and running, then you will have this. So you will have this button added and you can directly go ahead and click on this. It might take a minute of two to launch. So let's just wait for uh, the plugin to launch. Uh, to get this particular plugin, you obviously will have to select for the plugin to be installed during the installation process. So let's just take a quick look on how that looks like. So I'm not going to reinstall the plugin or reinstall the NMM, but uh, let's just quickly go and uh, look at that option or how that option looks like. So let's just quickly go to the page where this configuration is available and uh, next, next and yeah. So this is the NMM installation options and in here you will see that we, I have selected, uh, um, here you will see that there is a section for SQL Server Management Studio options and here you will have to select the SQL SMS plugin. Also enable the other two options uh, for your administrator to be able to do ad hoc backups and also enable script in the backup window. I'm just going to cancel this for now and let's go to the plugin. So when you launch the plugin, it is going to look something like this. Uh, you would notice that I do have other databases here as well, which is basically the system databases. And that is by default listed here. But we want to take the backup of the availability group. So in the drop down under database filter, I am going to select the name of the availability group that belongs to this particular server configuration. And on selecting this, uh, you will get all the databases that belongs to the particular availability group. Now, let me go ahead and select. So you can, uh, if you have multiple databases, you can select all of them. Or if you uh, want to, you know, database, uh, if you want to back up a single database, you could, you know, just select that particular database. Uh, the client type is going to be a listener and this is the name of our listener which is basically the availability group itself it should be the availability group itself uh, the backup type again we have log only cumulative incremental and full backup so log only backup is transaction log backup cumulative incremental backup is just the changes from the last full backup and the full backup is just the complete backup of your uh, database whichever database is selected here so for this demo, we'll go ahead and select full. Then you have an option called copy only backup. So this is meant for uh, scenarios wherein you do not want to break the backup chain. Uh, so you might have already experienced or seen uh, scenarios wherein uh, during a log only backup, your backup gets promoted to a full. And that is mainly because if in case there is a backup taken by any other tool other than the network server and there the black uh, the backup chain breaks and that is why your uh, network server then attempts to take a full backup so if in case you do not want that kind of scenario to happen or if in case you're already taking a backup on the network server this is just a feature that you want, want to give to your dba admins then you could go ahead and have them check this so that the backup that they do do not uh, disturb or break the backup chain that you are doing from the network server. So for this demo, I'm just going to uncheck that. Uh, then you might have a blank uh, network server uh, field here. Uh, when you launch this for the first time, you can go ahead and type in the network server name and then click on update. 
once you click on update it is going to connect to your network server and pull down the information for the backup pool and once that is done you will be able to select which backup pool you want to send this backup to so in my case it is the FS pool and then you can go ahead and click on run now this this will take a couple of minutes so let me go ahead and pause this video here and come back when uh, the backup is completed and the backup is completed successfully you can click on ok the easiest way to look at uh, the backups is to go to the db restore tab so here if you check the backup completed at uh, or started at around 9.25 and completed at 9.27 I have a very small database uh, if you click here you will be able to see the full backup which was completed at 9.27 so this is the backup uh, that we just completed in case you're looking for any advanced features then you can go to the options tab here and you can select the advanced features that are available for uh, the SQL database backup uh, basically the consistency check before the backup if in case it is a very large database and you want to stripe it into multiple uh, stripes to take use of multiplexing or make use of multiplexing then you can enable this and uh, you know put in how many of stripes you want to stripe this backup into deduplication is a default feature so you need not enable this uh, do not enable encryption or compression on SQL or on uh, on the networker and when you are using a data domain as a target backup device if in case it's a tape yes you could go ahead and uh, do this Thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, share it with our community in the comment section below or you can drop me a message at my Twitter account. I will see you on another video. Goodbye.